Sydney, Australia, and it's my first time here, and I only have a few days to explore and eat, so we're gonna do a whole encompassing video of like what to do in 24 hours in Sydney, and we're gonna eat all the Australian things, all the stuff that you must eat, and we're gonna go to all the really, really touristy places, so warning, this video is gonna be really touristy, but we're gonna do everything that you need to eat and see here in Sydney, and behind the camera, we have John from John and Mally. Hey guys! <laughs> And he's gonna be our tour guide because he's lived in Sydney his whole life. So he's gonna show us around and make sure that we do all the things we need to do. So right now we are at Darling Harbor on the Piermont Bridge and we're gonna explore this area first. So let's go check it out. The Piermont Bridge at Darling Harbor is a must go when you're in Sydney. It just might have the best view of the whole harbor since you can get a full 360 view of everything. You have the Cockle Bay Wharf on one side and the harbor side on the other. So make sure you come take a stroll on the bridge and soak in the picture-perfect scenery. Okay, so right now we are walking along Cockle Bay Wharf. There's a lot of like cool restaurants and shops here and it's a really nice view of the harbor. So in Darling Harbour, it's split between Cockle Bay Wharf and Harbourside. There's a lot of restaurants and nice buildings and attractions you can see, such as the aquarium. There's also the Maritime Museum. So there's a lot of things to do here in Darling Harbour. Okay, so we walked to the other side of the harbor, which is called the harbor side, and this is where you can see the International uh, Convention Center, and they also have a bunch of restaurants and shops here to explore as well, and then also if you wanted to ride the Ferris wheel, you can do that on this side. So to explore this whole area, which includes the harbor side, the Piermont Bridge, and the Cockle Bay Wharf, takes about... If you're going to be walking around and taking photos, taking in the harbor, about 40 minutes. And not far from here, about a 10 minute walk, you can go to the Star, which is our casino. And there's a lot of restaurants and food there that you can find. Definitely worth checking out. So after you're done at the harbor, make sure you stop by this small pie shop that's only a few steps away called Harry's Cafe de Wheels. They have a variety of different things on the menu such as hot dogs, sandwiches, and pastries, but they're most known for their savory meat pies, which is something you definitely have to try while you're in Sydney. Usually meat pies are eaten with ketchup, also known as tomato sauce here in Australia, but we ordered one that's a little bit more special. Okay, so we just stopped by Harry's Cafe de Wheels and we got apparently a must get here in Sydney, which is the tiger pie. Oh my gosh, look at that bright green color. So basically what we got is a beef pie and what makes it a tiger pie is the mashed potatoes on top as well as the mashed peas, which I've never seen before, and then also the gravy. So to be fair, um, disclaimer, I don't really like peas, but I'm willing to give it a shot <laughs> and hopefully it'll be good. So how, how do we usually eat this? Oh man, this is gonna get messy. Yeah, I can tell. But you gotta try it. Okay, so just go for it go kind for of it. thing. Go okay, just it. go for it. Oh my gosh. A bit gosh, of the pastry, a bit of the meat. Looks like a good bite of everything. Oh my god, it smells so good. The gravy smells amazing. Okay. Mmm. Oh wow. Yeah, it's like really interesting. I actually don't Tastes too much pea flavor, which is good for me. And the gravy is really, really flavorful. I really like the pepperiness of the beef too. Next, you're gonna wanna head over to the town hall area. It's about a 10 to 15 minute walk from Darling Harbor. Here you can find huge buildings, including food halls and big shopping centers. Our first stop here is in the gallery shopping center, and it's a special little gem inside of a bookstore. Okay, so we're at Black Star Pastry, which is actually just like a little stand inside a, a really big bookstore. They're really, really famous for their watermelon cake. And when you look at it, you're just like in awe because it just looks like a piece of art, honestly. It looks like it has some layers of cake as well as cream. And then you have the watermelon slice in the middle. And then on top, you have some strawberries and like edible flowers. So I'm really excited to try it because apparently this thing sells out and it's just really, really popular over here. Oh my gosh. Oh, it smells very fresh and fruity. The watermelon is super juicy and sweet. And then the cake isn't like super spongy. It, it has definitely a different texture, but I really like the cream with it as well. Actually it makes a really good bite with everything in it. Mm. You have to try this. This is really, really unique. And another thing you have to try when you're in Australia is coffee, because apparently American coffee is really bad compared to this stuff. <laughs> Oh, it's actually quite nice because it's not super bitter and it's quite smooth when you drink it. It's actually really good. After finishing up at Black Star Pastry, head down about one block and you'll find yourself at the Pitt Street Mall, which is a bustling shopping street. 
Okay, so now we're walking through Pitt Street Mall. It looks like this really nice outdoor mall with a lot of different shopping options like Sephora and Uniqlo, my favorite. And they have a lot of like buskers here too as well during the day and they're providing entertainment. If you wanted to do any shopping in Sydney CBD, Pitt Street Mall is the place to go. There's loads of shopping inside the Westfields and on the other side it actually connects to QVB which is Queen Victoria building and we'll check that out soon. Pitt Street Mall is also surrounded by a bunch of indoor shopping malls such as the Westfield, the Mid City Shopping Center, and also the Strand Arcade which is a historical building filled with even more restaurants and shops. Once you've walked through the Strand, make your way over to the QVB, which is just a few steps away. On the way there, you might want to snap a few photos on George Street, which is the main street leading through the center of Sydney CBD. It's definitely one of the most iconic, picturesque spots. Okay, so now we've made our way over to the QVB, also known as the Queen, Queen Victoria Building. It's a heritage site. It's been here over a hundred years. We have lots of shopping, lots of cafes and restaurants and it's also connected to Town Hall Station. It's a beautiful building uh -huh. inside and out. Okay, so let's go check it out. The QVB is a four-story marketplace featuring luxury shops and boutiques, as well as elegant cafes. Even if you're not into shopping, the amazing architecture alone is a reason to visit. It's truly a stunning landmark in the heart of Sydney, showcasing vintage architecture and intricate interior details. So right now we're at the very top floor of the QVB. You have a really, really nice view. It's nice lighting for photos up here because it actually has a sunroof and it just lets all their nice natural lighting in. I highly recommend checking out this building for at least 30 minutes because there's so many shops to explore and cafes as well. And yeah, I'm just really glad that I was able to check it out. After soaking in the beauty of QVB, start walking over to Hyde Park. It's Australia's oldest park and a great place to take a stroll or have a picnic. Okay, so now we're walking into Hyde Park, which is about like a five minute walk. Yep, from... five minute walk from QVB. It's a very nice park. You can just hang out here and chill, especially if you don't want to walk around the city uh, too much because you know you might be tired. It's a nice place to chill and relax. And right next to it, there's St. Mary's Cathedral. And it's a really, really nice day today too. It's like sunny out and stuff. It's like the perfect day to go to a park. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And at the yeah. center of the park, there's a beautiful fountain. It's so pretty, I have to show you guys. After all that shopping and exploring, it's about time for a snack. So head over to Flower and Stone. They serve a variety of items such as tarts and pastries, but today we're getting a very special classic Australian dessert. Okay, so now we are at Flower and Stone, which is a bakery cafe in Wulumalu. We got their famous panna cotta lamington, and basically it has sponge cake that's soaked in panna cotta, and then it's dipped in chocolate, and then covered in coconut shavings. Yeah, it looks like it has a little bit of berries in there as well. Mm. 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 First it hits with that coconut and chocolate flavor, really, really good together, and the cake is nice and moist. You get a little bit of a hint of that berry as well. Mmm, this is really good. Mm. Now that you've discovered the magic of the lamington and satisfied your snack craving, let's go eat more! <laughs> because you can't leave Sydney without having brunch. Okay, so now we're at Bill's, which is a well-known brunch spot in Darlinghurst. We decided to um, stop by Bill's for their famous ricotta hotcakes, which have bananas and honey comb butter, which I've never heard of before, so I'm really excited to try it. And then we also have their syrup, so we're going to do a generous pour on the pancakes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I may have gone a little overboard, but you know, I like sugar, so it should be fine. Okay, let's cut into one of these. Oh my gosh. Look at that texture inside. It looks so fluffy. Okay, I gotta make sure I get some of that honeycomb butter as well. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. These are so fluffy and light. And the honeycomb butter, oh my gosh. It adds a really nice sweetness to it as well. Mmm. The texture is so good. And the honeycomb butter is a game changer. Oh, it's really good. After finishing up at Bell's, it's time to introduce you to yet another Australian specialty food. Yes, this video probably should just be a food tour instead because that's my highest priority, but I promise we'll get to non-food things soon. To get there, take the T4 train from King's Cross to Town Hall and transfer to the T1 train. 
get off at Winyard Station, which by the way is a beautiful station to check out in and of itself. From there, it's less than a 10 minute walk to Burke Street Bakery in Barangaroo. Okay, so we just stopped by Burke Street Bakery and we got a pork and fennel sausage roll, which is their most well-known item there. And usually they eat it with tomato sauce, which we call ketchup. And they have this kind of cool device. So you like squeeze it and then, oh my god! I got startled. <laughs> is that a good amount? You think? Yeah, that's good. That's good? Yeah. Okay. Oh, mm. Mm. The pastry is perfect. Like the texture, the flakiness, and then inside it's really meaty. It has so much flavor in there. And the ketchup or tomato sauce just complements it perfectly. Oh my gosh. Mm. Mm. First sausage roll is a success. It's so good. I highly recommend this. Mm. So if that wasn't enough food for you, you can also stop by next door to Shortstop for some delicious donuts. But by now, you probably want to walk and digest, so it's time to take the T8 train from Winyard Station to Circular Quay to explore. It's no secret that you have to visit the most iconic landmarks in Sydney, the Harbour Bridge and the Opera House. If you have time, I recommend taking the ferry to Manly, which is about a 30 minute ride and you'll get amazing views from the water. We didn't get a chance to do this today, so we just did it the old fashioned way and walked up to the Opera House. Okay, so now we're finally at the Opera House. We're walking right up to it and it looks so pretty. I have to show you guys. Oh my gosh, look at that! Ta-da! It looks so good in person. So much better than all the photos. It looks just like in Finding Nemo. This is definitely a must visit when you're in Sydney. And then here's the Harbour Bridge. So you get a really nice view of the Harbour Bridge when you're up close and personal with the Opera House. Right across the street from the Circular Quay train station is a must try gelato shop called Messina. They have multiple locations, but this one is perfect if you want to satisfy your sweet tooth after visiting the Opera House. They have so many flavors to choose from that it's a little bit overwhelming, but let me save you the time and effort. Just get the pandan and coconut. It's one of the best flavors I've ever tried. Next, take the Sydney light rail from Circular Quay to Chinatown. There are a bunch of great restaurants there, and if it's a Friday, check out the Chinatown Friday Night Market. Usually it's flooded with people, but given what's going on right now, there unfortunately weren't many vendors or people there. Once this is all over, it'll definitely be a great place to hit up and snack on some street food. For dinner, walk a couple blocks over to the Sparrows Mill on Goldburn Street for some amazing Korean fried chicken. It may not look like much from the outside, but since it's located on the lower ground level, once you walk down the stairs, you'll see how busy and loud it gets. Okay, so now we're at ICG, the Sparrows Mill, Incredible Chicken. Seems to have many names, but apparently it's really good Korean fried chicken here in Sydney. And I'm with Nick and Moby and John and Nally. Mally's here. But yeah, we have all the food. It looks so good. Mm. Wow, so juicy and crispy. Oh my god. After dinner, if you're craving a little bit of dessert, like I always am, then head back over to Chinatown and stop by Emperor's Garden Cakes and Bakery. Usually you'll see an extremely long line here, so we were lucky that we didn't have a long wait. Okay, so I just got some Emperor's Puffs and they make these really, really fresh. They're really, really cheap as well. I think they're like 40 cents. So apparently this is like a very must try thing in Chinatown. Oh. It's really hot. Oh my god. Woo. They're not kidding when they said it's made fresh. You can see inside there's like some custard in there. These are like really good little bite sized desserts. Mm. Okay, so we're ending our full day of eating and doing touristy things here in Sydney with these Emperor Puffs. And what a great way to end the whole video. Of course, we did. Uh, so many things today and I definitely don't expect any of you guys to do every single thing that we did but hopefully we provided a wide array of options for you to check out while you're here in Sydney and special thanks to John and Molly for taking us around I'll have their channel linked in the description box and yeah if you like this video make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell to so get notified when I upload give this video a thumbs up and I'll see you guys in the next one bye